tomorrow, August 15th, is the Feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's the principal feast day of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Today, August 14th, is the day when the Episcopal Church commemorates Jonathan Myrick Daniels, who was, a, you may know his story, he was a seminarian of the Episcopal Church who went to do civil rights work in the South in the 1960s, and on one of his trips there was, was shot and killed while trying to protect someone else. Someone who is certainly a, a very worthy figure, but hardly known outside the Episcopal Church. Uh, certain, certainly not commemorated by other denominations, probably not known much outside the United States, when compared with the Blessed Virgin Mary, who is arguably the, the, the best known Christian saint, uh, the one to whom the greatest devotion is given across all of Christianity, across multiple denominations. So you could hardly find two people who are more different in terms of their, their, their stature in the church. And yet they're very similar in many ways, I think, these two people each of whom was called by God into something new in which he or she had very little experience or, or other expertise or anything else, resources to draw on. Mary, who was probably a relatively young teenager who was called into something that, that involved personal danger to her in her society. This was not something that should happen, a woman who was not married becoming pregnant. And likewise for Jonathan Daniels, this person who had what seemed like a fairly steady life set out for him. He was in seminary, he was going to be a priest, a life that generally doesn't involve a whole lot of danger or, or calamity or even burden in, in many ways, but who when sitting in church one day felt the call to leave that life at least temporarily to go do something for social justice which he knew at the time also involved personal danger to himself. In his case, it actually played out in that way. Where I think this comes to each one of us is that, in fact, neither of them really knew what the next step was going to be. God called them to take a first step, and that was all they really had to do. You and I in our comfort and our safety, very often would prefer to know what the end of the job is before we even begin it. We would prefer to know that everything is going to work out exactly the way we plan it to before we even begin. And yet that is not, it seems, what God calls God's saints to do. Not to have everything perfectly planned out, not to know what every step will be, not to have any guarantee of what the outcome will be, but simply to take the first step. Perhaps all that any of us is called to do is that. Can you imagine it being any simpler than that? And yet it isn't simple, isn't it? Letting go of that worry about what is the next step and how am I going to do it and how am I going to arrange it? How am I going to pay for it? How, how is all of it going to work out? And yet it seems that isn't at all what God calls any of us to do. But rather simply to say yes, to take the first step. To step out in faith. Knowing, believing, trusting that God will be there at step two and step three and step ten and step ten thousand, however there are many, however many there may be. Two examples from the saints of God. Two very different people and yet somehow the same message. Will we do what they did? Will we have the courage to take the first step? With the grace of God, I hope we will. Amen.